Hey everyone, in this video we want to talk to you a little bit about protein and some easy ways to incorporate more protein into your diet. Uh, the reason we want to talk about this is because just last week Brian and myself along with our really good friend Ari Witten had launched our Fat Loss Blueprint which is currently an 18 lesson comprehensive guide to maximizing fat loss and getting the body you want in the most effortless and easiest way possible by essentially taking advantage of your biology. Uh, we look at pretty much every factor of lifestyle and environmental influences that can impact body composition and either make or break your diet without you knowing it. Uh, and one of the fundamental tenets that we touch on is why it's important to ensure you get an adequate intake of dietary protein. Uh, there's many reasons for it, and I'm not going to, we aren't going to talk about that in this, in this video, uh, but what we've found with uh, the members who have purchased the blueprint and are part of our private Facebook group uh, is that many of them struggle to obtain an adequate amount of protein because they've been regularly under eating protein for long periods of time. This is extremely common with women. I remember like years ago when I was a hairstylist still and I was still like super into nutrition. I would talk to my clients and I'm like, you just need to eat more protein. And they'd be like, I have peanut butter. <laughs> I'm like, that's not protein. <laughs> yeah. Um, they don't understand why they can't get the body they want. Yeah. And so I, you know, so first things first, a lot of foods contain protein. A lot do, yeah. but not all of those foods are good sources of protein. And there's really kind of two ways that you can look at this. The first is on a volume basis. And the second is on a calorie basis. When you look at fibrous vegetables, like half their calories come from protein, uh, truly. Um, and it's because they don't have a lot of, they have like no fat. They have, you know, only very little carbohydrate, like half of which is fiber. And then they have protein. And so, yeah, half their calories come from protein. So are fibrous vegetables a good source of protein? If we just completely ignore any issues around the amino acid profile or uh, digestibility and bioavailability, which is going to be lower, um, it's not a good source of protein for the simple fact that you would need to eat a ridiculous volume of fibrous vegetables to get uh, a meaningful amount of protein. Um, and that's just not doable for most everyone um, because it's going to cause a lot of discomfort. Now, on the flip side, uh, you have the calorie argument, which is like peanut butter. Peanut butter is, I mean, it has like, what, seven grams of protein for just two tablespoons? Like, you, could, is... you could get a lot of protein if you eat a jar of peanut butter. I, I mean, you really <laughs> could, and it wouldn't take up a lot of space. I'm sure many of you could easily eat a jar of peanut butter. I get can. a solid amount of protein. <laughs> Uh, but then that's where the calorie issue comes in. You yeah. would also be taking in like 4,000 calories in order to do that. Uh, so plants in general, there are definitely exceptions, but when it comes to whole food plants, they just aren't the best source of protein in the diet because you either run into issues with volume or you run into issues with calories uh, because many good plant sources of protein like legumes uh, come with a bunch of extra calories from either fat or carbohydrate or both. And so what are you going to do? Where are you going to get your protein? Well, the obvious answer is to focus on lean sources of animal protein, which would be things like eggs, egg whites, uh, dairy, preferably low or non-fat, and then lean cuts of meat. Yeah. Um, because these are going to just be a very, very dense source of protein. They don't take up a lot of space volume wise and they're low in calories. Uh, but that's not going to work if you don't eat any animal products. If you're following like a whole foods plant-based vegan diet, that's not going to work. So in that case, protein powders. That's really the only option. Um, unless tempeh is okay uh, to make up some of that. Tempeh right? and tofu is another but relatively low calorie. A lot of people that are health conscious are afraid of soy too. So, or, I mean, or maybe they just have a soy allergy, allergy or hypothyroidism. I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of factors at play, and so I, you know, one of the safest things that you can do to make sure you're getting adequate protein when you're eating a vegan diet is to use a high quality plant-based protein powder. 
because it not only concentrates all of the plant protein into a low calorie source, but the processing to make these protein powders actually increases the bioavailability of the plant protein to be equivalent to that of animal products. Um, and so it's like a win-win. It's lower in calories, it's low in volume, and it's high in bioavailability. So with all of that being said, you know, acknowledging both vegan and omnivorous sources of protein, how can we start to incorporate protein into our diet in a way where it's like, it, it doesn't feel like a burden? Um, well, for me, some of my breakfast options are protein puddings. Um, and I can post a recipe in the comments if anyone wants it. Uh, egg whites with fat-free cheese on it. That's a really quick way to get some protein in you. Um, smoothies is something. Smoothies. Ever since we moved to Scottsdale, it's been really hot. Yeah, I, I historically hated smoothies because I think you should chew your food, right? <laughs> and people that have large appetites probably should chew all their food because we just don't get the satiation signals the same way. But uh, living here in Scottsdale, I'm so hot that my appetite's decreased and I need more fluids in me. So they work depending on where you live. Like that's my opinion now. It also depends on what you put in them. A smoothie as far as a protein source can be a really good option because all you really need to do is put in water, ice, uh, and protein, and protein and, powder. Uh, I or, throw some fiber in there too, like a fiber supplement, and then it's really filling too. Or berries. You, you yep, put some like a cup of bar berries. blueberries in it, which are very low calorie, add a lot of flavor. Um, so smoothies, uh, I personally, for lunch, I like to have a big bowl of oat bran, and I will mix protein powder into my oat bran because mm -hmm. then... Uh, I don't have any additional volume from trying to get other sources of protein, and it's really easy. The protein adds flavor, and it complements the oat brand really well. Uh, other things you can do is, if you are omnivorous, just whenever you're planning a meal, base it around that lean source of protein. Yeah, lean protein sources are white fish, uh, turkey breast, um, chicken breast, bison, venison. Or certain cuts of beef, like top round uh, eye of round, bottom round, sirloin tip, and uh, top sirloin is kind of on the border. But yeah. I mean, basing your meals around those, uh, you can get really, really lean, like ground up turkey breasts that you can turn into hamburgers that you could eat. Yeah, I do that um, often, or meatballs, like I uh, meatloaf. Like you can still have your traditional family meals and make them super lean too. Yeah, like uh, I think one really good example is anything that calls for sour cream, swap it out for Greek yogurt. Yep. Really easy way that. to slash calories and increase protein intake. Or mayonnaise, like even mayonnaise in a recipe, I replace that with cities. Which is Greek yogurt. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of ways to really kind of get creative with your protein intake. Uh, it's just going to take, you know, a little thought. If you have recipes that you really like, and that you find like, and where if you have foods that you find yourself making regularly, then don't deviate from those. Just find ways to make modifications to the recipe that favors a higher protein intake. I, and I mean, it could be as simple as adding a scoop of protein powder to something if it's gonna be liquid or semi-liquid. Yeah, like egg bakes, you can throw some of that uh, unflavored protein powder in there to even boost the protein higher. Like if you're having trouble hitting your protein target. Yeah, for anyone that does any form of baking with anything like uh, oh, I've made protein breads, brownies, and... you know, brownies, cookies, uh, pancakes, waffles, whatever, you can mix protein powder into the batter, and that can be a really easy way to boost the protein content of the foods you normally enjoy eating. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of substitutions. If you need help, then reach out to us. You know, share some of the things that you eat regularly, and we can help give advice on how to. Uh, bolster the protein content of it. And this isn't said with the intent of saying that like you need to eat a million grams of protein, protein, everything. No, we're saying it for people that are struggling to increase their protein intake. Yeah. Uh, it's doable. And it's just going to take a little time of establishing new dietary habits, habits. where protein is not seen as an add-on, but more seen as something central to the dish that you're preparing. So if you enjoyed this content, then great. That's what we're trying to do. And if you know someone who needs some help figuring out how to increase the protein content of their diet, then, you know, send them this video and let them know. Thanks. Bye.